Streaks. I'm your host, Mark the Captain Bly, and on the call, Mr. Phil Snow. Captain, it's good to be back here with you on a beautiful Saturday morning to uh, call the uh, Archibald Blue Streaks and the Liberty Center Tiger JV action here today as uh, we saw the Varsity Tigers take home a big win last night uh, on the road at Archibald, came in, uh, uh, came in there ready to play and uh, really took it to them from the opening snap. So uh, this is round uh, number three. <laughs> Uh, if you will, of our uh, Archibald yeah. Liberty Center action. We had Archibald Liberty Center and week. Grade. Yeah, 7th and 8th grade on Thursday. We had uh, Varsity taking care of business last night, and now we got the JV action here uh, on a crisp, cool uh, Saturday morning. Not too much wind there, judging by the flag. Uh, probably good temperature down there on the field. Uh, beautiful Saturday morning for some football, Cap. Well, it probably is probably the, the prime time football weather here with your pads and everything else on down there on the field. And, uh, you know, I think Liberty's ready. I, th I think, you know, one of the things I think in the back of the kid's mind here is, especially today, is the seventh grade took care of business. The varsity took care of business. They want to take care of business there. So. Yeah, I think they want to follow the mantra of what's been going on. And uh, judging by the look of things, I'm going to say that Liberty Center is going to take the field on defense to start the ball game. <laughs> And uh, we'll, why we got him out there, it looks like Kyler Kern, Deegan Schwager, the linebacker, Max Walker also out there. Uh, defensive line is uh, Lewis Collins, Logan Safuentes, Lucas Navarre. On the back end, Tank Sonneberg, Tyler okay. Roars. Um, te or not Tyler Roars, that's <laughs> Teddy Weirenbeck. Uh Noah Hammontree, the DB on the side. That's one of my favorite side. names, Weirenbeck. Uh JT Olcrew, DB on this side, and playing at the safety spot is Blake Garber seeing his first action back this season. Yeah, he was injured, wasn't he? Uh, I'm not sure. I just know he missed the first couple of games. So uh, Archibald's going to line up in the shotgun. They'll take the snap. Got a guy in motion. They'll hand off up the middle. Nothing doing right there. Stopped by Lucas Navarre, Deegan Schwager on the stop. Nothing. Jarrett Rufinock, the quarterback for Archibald, number 10. Yeah, Collins came from the opposite side, tracked that down too. Max Burroughs, the ball carrier, number 22 for the Blue Streets. Younger brother of Brian Burroughs for Archibald. Uh, saw him on the D-line last night, offensive line. So Archibald now comes out for their second snap. This time it's going to be an empty set in the backfield for Rufinacht. He'll take the snap, drops back to pass. Looks left side, nothing there, being chased out of the backfield now. Rolls, throws, intercepted there by Noah Hammontree. He's got a little bit of room up the sideline, and he's tackled right there, right about the 36-yard line. And a big defensive play for the Tigers as Noah Hammontree stepped in front of that pass from Rufinock and Liberty Center with a big defensive play to open up the ball game. Well, you know, we talk about our line and our the dominance of, of Liberty Center blocking, but... You know, these last couple of seasons, Phil, let's talk a little bit about our defensive backfield. And that's something traditionally Liberty Center has not been known for. But, man, the, the level of play of our defensive backs in, in the last two years, and especially the, these last three or four games, have been phenomenal. Yeah, the and you can tell they've really done some work on the footwork things, and, and you've seen that really well with uh, what you've seen with Cam Collier last week. Now Thomas Moeller will get his first carry of the ball game. And he will be tackled by Burroughs in number 62. Also on the play, Jason Grime for the Blue Streaks. Gain of, we'll call it, five yards on the play. We'll bring up second down and five for the Tigers. We'll get that offensive line for you, and as I'll get that defensive Archibald line for you as well. Number 66 out there, Isaac Meyer for the Blue Streaks. Number 11 out there also, Sean Garcia. Smith now takes a snap, got a guy out there, looks to throw it, and he just overthrows his intended target, Jackson Bartels. Uh, had him out there, but just a little bit too strong on the throw, and it'll fall harmlessly to the turf and, and bring had, up third down. Had two receivers out there on the, on the wing, so uh, threw it in between them, unfortunately. Another guy out there on the D-line is Braden Garcia for the Blue Streaks. Roy Smith fakes very well. Very well on that. He hides the ball very well. Yeah, all, all levels uh, of the fakes are really good. Now Jackson's going to go in motion. He gets the carry. He breaks a tackle up across the 25. Now up across the 15, and he's driven out of bounds right at about, uh, we'll call it the six-yard line, driven out of bounds by Ryder Ryan, the freshman for the Blue Streaks. 
And a good pick up there on third down and five as Bartels came around on that motion jet sweep action, was able to get out there with some speed, had good blockers in front of him, first and goal, Liberty Center. Yeah, and, and the even the JV, the Archibald Blue Streaks, their varsity team, what, what is he talking about? Back up. I don't understand that. Maybe he's telling me he was out of bounds. I'm not sure. No, he told the the team to back up. Oh. They were all in the box. That's weird. Deep motion. Hand up right up the middle to Roars. And wow. Roars squeaks in untouched for the Tiger touchdown from six yards away. You wow. know, Cap, that, that's been one thing that we've seen consistent over the first four weeks. <laughs> that quick hitting trap play. And then you mentioned the fakes from Smith. How about the fakes from the backs there? Yeah. Carrying out that jet sweep, which you just saw work so effectively with Bartels a couple of plays with ago. Zero trap. Come back with a zero trap, and he goes untouched into the end zone. Max Walker on to attempt the PAT. Thomas Moeller to hold. The snap, the hold. Yeah. PAT is blocked. Oh, no, no. Oh. oh. You can't do anything on it. It sucks. Yeah, it's the rules. Uh, PAT's blocked. It looked, didn't look like the snap yeah, and the exchange snap. was very clean, but uh, uh, Ethan Gray, the snapper, uh, Thomas Moeller, the holder, Thomas, Max Walker to attempt Thomas the PAT. Thomas Moeller so. caught the block. <laughs> <laughs> so Just after see, Brogan last night. That's got, the second time in four games that we've had a deflected pass that one of our own players has caught yeah. and gained yards on. Yes, uh, Stephen Brogan actually is in the book. He caught one he caught one reception for two yards. <laughs> and Landon Amstutz has a reception for like six seven, yards and yes, a first down. Yards, so, yeah. hey, make your receptions count, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Archibald, now we'll go from the 35, their second possession here in the first quarter. 8.08 to go. Liberty Center scored it on uh, after the turnover, so we'll see what Archibald can do here. Coming in their second series. It'll be Rufinock now in the shotgun. He's got Burroughs lined up to his right. They'll send a guy in motion far side. Rufinock back to pass. Heavy pressure from Schwager, unable to bring him down. Rufinock still on the move up across the 35-yard line, and he's driven out of bounds by Kyler Kern after a gain of, we'll call it, three yards on the play. So good job there by Rufinock. Had some heavy heat from Deegan Schweiger right away, unable to get away from him and able to get some positive yards. Yeah, Schweiger made a nice uh, swim move on the end there up underneath the uh, defense or offensive end and just swimmed him, got underneath and got, got pressure on the quarterback there. <clears throat> All right, sec second down and seven. A Ranger Krieger. The guy that was in motion. Now they'll bring another guy in motion this side. They'll hand off to the motion guy. He's got room across the 40, and he's going to be up to, we'll call it, right around the 49-yard line, or the 44-yard line. Tackle by Mason Smith and Kyler Kern. That was interesting. They ran the, the motion into the short side of the field and just kind of bunched everybody up. And I'll tell you what, their varsity team did that a couple times. They, you know, third and one, they had everybody within, you know, 10 feet of the ball. And uh, it didn't work out so well. But uh, I think that's maybe right in the, in the playbook now. A interesting set. And a penalty call. Oh, I don't think they had enough guys on the line of scrimmage. So a false start penalty against the Blue Streaks. And that'll move it back from third and one now to third and six. Ouch. So a big penalty. Seven fifteen here to go. First quarter under away on a beautiful Saturday morning. Uh, hard to believe we're finishing up week number four here, the high school football season, and uh, uh, yeah, another beautiful fall weather last night. And another great day today. We got some college football back back in midway action. Midway point next week. Yeah, it's so crazy to say that already. So Rufinock now in the shotgun. He'll take the snap, fakes the handoff, looks to pass. Throws it over the head of the intended uh, in the intended target, and that was number eleven, Sean Garcia. And Garber, if that ball would have been thrown accurately, Garber would have had a pick. 
So good job defensively. You know, you mentioned earlier also as well about the DB play from Liberty Center. You know, that was one thing that I talked with Coach Moeller about last night a little bit was, you know, how well that they've stepped up with their footwork, reading some of these plays. And not only that, Cap, but how well do they do tackling in space one-on-one? Yeah. And they do a really nice job of that. A great punt now, lone line drive. Hops at about the 25-yard line. It's going to take a blue streak roll. Garber's going to pick it up to 15, going to try to make some some guys miss. But a good tackle right there at about, we'll call it the 24-yard line, number 69 on the play. That's Trevor Bowerman for the Blue Streaks. Well, and you make a great point, Phil, and we'll talk a little bit about all the defensive backs as yards after catch. They are limiting that to basically nothing, and that's what happened last night. The yards after catch, the yak, uh, was about zero. Um, And uh, Liberty was able to basically – run the clock on defense you know we talk about tackling in space and tackling in bounds and and yards after catch being negative at that point Um, that runs the clock now it'll be under center quick hitter up the middle it'll be thomas moeller thomas moeller breaks it free he's got some room and a convoy in front of him and he kind of had to push david minnick i think number 82 uh, over there a little bit as thomas moeller was coming in hot off uh, off the back side of his block and a 24 yard pickup for the tigers and they're rolling again here right at the 48 yard line okay we'll, we'll get cat back here hopefully a good play there yeah, for the Got to plug the mic all the way in. Oh, there we go. Now they'll go right back to it. Oh, good play fake there. Got a guy out there. It's Wyron Beck. He makes the catch. Good block there by Garber on the outside. But I think they're oh, going to get no! Blake Garber. There's a guy standing right for there. For offensive holding uh, on the outside in front of no! that play. But a good play fake there, as you mentioned, from Smith. Uh, and he had Ted Wyron Beck out there on the edge all by himself. Blake Garber tried to throw that block to spring him free, but they're going to get him for a holding penalty. Uh, right, at, uh, They'll say right at about the 45-yard line, so that'll push the line of scrimmage back to, we'll call it the Liberty Center 45-yard line to bring up first down at 13. My, uh, my problem with that is you had a, a, a ref, the side judge four feet from the play, and a guy throws the flag from 15 yards away. So my question with that is, is does he, the guy running up, does he make that call or does he follow the ball? So that that would be one of the things I would be interested in seeing. Now Smith hands it up the middle. Thomas Moeller again on the carry. Oh, excuse me, that's Tyler Rohr or Ted Wyram back on the carry. 20, yeah, the 28-21, it's hard to see those numbers. Well, I think Tyler wears 26, Orth wears 28, so yeah. there, there's a lot of 20 numbers. I'll get it right eventually. Yeah, Orth is 28, I think, pretty sure. So Tigers now line it up on second down. Their second drive of the first quarter. They'll line up in that standard formation, two backs behind Smith. He'll hand to Moeller. Moeller, good cut. His vision is phenomenal, Phil. Good cut there by Moeller. Breaks it up across to the uh, 45 of the Blue Streaks. Tackle on the play by Isaac Meyer, number 66. Gain of seven yards on the play. Third down and three for Liberty Center. Thomas Moeller just he, – he explodes to his hole and then he's able to uh, to see that one-cut vision and he just uh, – he makes the most of it. Now to be a quick hitter up the middle. middle. Moeller on the carry again. And this looks like it will be first down yardage for the Tigers as number 62, Jason Grime, well, on the stop for the Blue Streets. And, and Thomas Moeller is a coach's kid, and I say that very respectfully here. And what that really does is his level of knowledge of the game. He's literally – he was carrying the ball bag, you know, when he could walk on this field. Uh, his dad coaching probably his entire life, uh, Thomas's entire life. So he's been around football, and you can see he makes great decisions. He's very football smart. Smith now takes the snap, drops back to pass, throws it up left side. Got a guy out there. Blake Garber comes down with the catch, and he's going to walk it into the end zone for a 41-yard touchdown pitch and catch for a Mason Smith to Blake Garber, and the Tigers go up 12 to nothing here with 4.09 to go in the first quarter. Yeah, that was a great play. A little fake. They've been, they've been hitting those zero and one gap so much that they were basically uh, 
stack in the box there, and they just threw it up over top there. And uh, Garber made a great play. So they will kick the extra point here. And you can see that we've got our scoreboard clock, our camera up. So 4.09 left here. Better snap. That's up. And and it's good. <laughs> it, it, it looked a little bit funky, but it uh, – it, it breaks the uprights, and a good snap from Gray, a good hold from Moeller, and Max Walker boots it through. And we can't – I mean, we could we could talk about Max Walker's, you know, efforts again here today, this morning about last night, Cap. You know, great job of uh, field position game. You know, he did have a, a one punt there that he probably wish he could have had back. But, you know, great kickoffs. Uh, he does a nice job in the punting game. He's a secret weapon there in the special teams. Well, and that's a key you – know, weapon is a key word. When, you know, we talk Casey Moeller every Wednesday. We have uh... – you know, our Wednesday morning interview session at the studio there. And, and Casey talks about the kicking game being a weapon overall. So, oh, hey, we're going to have to punt. Oh, all right, we're good. We're good. We'll just kick it over here. Or, you know, when you're talking your kicking game as a, as a tool, as a weapon, not as a last resort, that, that's something. So a different quarterback in now for the Blue Streaks. They're going to run it with him. Yeah, Archibald did that last night, too. You knew when uh, they, they ran a, one kid out of the Wildcat quite a bit. Yeah, Jack Hurst. Yeah, Hurst. And, and he's Hurst. had some success with that over yeah. the first three games of the year, and he was unable to get really anything going other than that three-yard touchdown run, uh, which was set up by the a really nice punt return by Chase Miller. Yeah, I tell you what, they uh, Chase Miller had a, had a kickoff return and a uh, punt Man, return. he is fast, boy. Woo! And uh, great athletes. So uh, Archibald now takes the uh, snap. Garcia now on the move. Got a guy out there. Lofts it up, and it's overthrown for his intended target, Kobe Schrock. Defending on the play for the Tigers, number 11, J.T. Olcrew. Well, and Smith made a great play. He, uh, he waited, he waited, he didn't overcommit. He didn't go for the pump fake. Pressured the quarterback into making an error throw there. Olcrew all over that play. Jensen in now for uh, Liberty Center. Yeah, Jensen got some snaps last night on the varsity. <coughs> Garcia now in at quarterback still. He'll take the shotgun snap, looks to throw, looks left side, got a guy out there, caught but hit right Again. away. Jackson Bartels met him right at the point of the catch, but a good catch by Ryder Ryan, but it's a – Going to leave Archibald short of the first down by a couple yards. They're going to line it up and try to go quick here. Yeah, and again, no yards after the catch. Archibald now lines it up in the shotgun. Garcia, and they're going to yeah, get a full moved. start penalty call uh, against Krieger, uh, against the Blue Streaks, the wide receiver over here. So now it uh, probably will result in a Archibald punt formation. Bill, I don't, I don't like that. I added the, the whole – Quarterback, hands clap, jerking, whatever. If that's not if that's not motion, what is? You I know? wonder. I always wondered that myself. How uh, how can the quarterback get away with some of the stuff that he does? Yeah. But, you know, but you know, that was one thing that Archibald did last night. They did use that clap snap count. So another really nice punt. Oh. This one drops at about the twenty eight yard line. Takes an Archibald bounce. Catch the ball right at about the we'll call it the. Uh, maybe the 18-yard line? Yep, that'll be a discussion. And the coaches are like, hey, what, catch the ball. That was one of the things they emphasized, I know, uh, talking to the coaches and, and in practice. You catch punts. If you got a fair catch it, fair catch it, but you catch punts. Don't let the ball roll. Or you catch it on the run and run right up the middle to pay dirt. <laughs> Oh, man, Cam Colley, uh, Cam Colley, two electric plays last night. It just seemed like maybe when Archibald was going to try to claw back into it, Cam Colley shut the door. Two. That was in the third quarter, their first drive of the third quarter. Yeah. He gets I think that was, six that was the nail. That was the nail. And Cam Colley with two pick sixes in consecutive weeks and a punt return. Now Roars gets the pitch, and he is driven down on yeah. the right side. I think they're going to get Archibald for a hit on the quarterback. I think. 30, who is the block out there being thrown? Oh. Out? They call holding? Yeah, they called holding on the block, and the kid hit hit Smith in the helmet. 
kind of like that. But and Max Walker is pretty disbelief about the call, but yeah, he's like, I don't. So it will negate the four to five yard pickup there, and will move Liberty Center back. Not sure if that's a half the distance or if it's the full ten. It does look like it's the full ten. So it'll be first down now and 20 from the nine-yard line. Sonnenberg checks in, 22 for Liberty Center. The tank. You've been hit by a tank. Standard wing T formation. They'll take the snap and hand to Moeller. What a cut there by Moeller. Uh, good cut there as Archbold made some penetration right into the backfield, but good pursuit from the Archbold defense. Yeah, he read that guard pool in. And made a great play into the gap, but Moeller just uh, left him standing there wondering what happened. Number 62, Jason Grime on the stop for the Blue Streaks. He's had a nice game defensively yeah. here in the first quarter. First quarter winding down here. Tigers lead it 13-0. Smith now in the shotgun. He's got Roars lined up to his left. He'll drop straight back, looks to pass, escapes the pocket, gets in trouble, and he's going to be sacked in the backfield. Uh, good uh, initial pressure there by Archibald. Mason Smith tried to step up in the pocket, uh, and then another uh, Archibald defender was able to take him down, and that is number 11 on the play for the Blue Streaks. That's Sean Garcia. Yeah, nobody was open. I, I like the fact that he didn't try to force it. You know, they're down in their, their end of the field. They're up 13. Um, you know, and like you said, he tried to step up and find a lane, but he didn't He didn't make a bad throw, and I think that's important. So Smith now back under center. They'll just send a guy in motion. It'll be Roars right up the middle, hit right away. <laughs> so Archbold defense rising to the occasion here on this series. Number 73 with a big stop. And that's Hunter Warner, the freshman. And that will send Liberty Center into a punt formation with 33 seconds left and with no play clock rolling at the time. I'm not sure if Liberty Center will even have to snap this football if they don't want to. Walker still back in punt formation. He'll take the snap. Punts it right about from the two-yard line. It's a high punt. And it's caught right there at the 42-yard line. And it was caught by number uh, 16. And that's Isaiah Gracia. Number 31. Garcia, excuse me. 31 for Archbold. Came up, kind of tried to stop. It looked like his knee buckled a little bit. Nobody hit him. And uh, he'll go off. And it was Isaiah Gracia, excuse me. There's a lot of Garcias and Gracias, so my bad on that. So now Archbold would have the ball. Nine seconds to go here in quarter number one. Rufinock back in at the quarterback spot for the Blue Streaks. Wonder if the play clock is uh, not working up here. Rufinock now in the shotgun. He'll take the snap. Hands. Inside reverse, broken tackle there. He's got some room on the left side. Good pursuit there by Ted Wyram back, and he shuts that down after a gain of no yards on the play. Number 25, Carter King, the ball carrier for the Blue Streaks. And that is how the first quarter will come to an end here at Kip Kernfield, Rex Lingren Stadium. It's Liberty Center on top, 13-0 to after quarter number one. Hey, while we got a break, let's thank our sponsors, KK Collision, the leader in auto repair industry, servicing Northwest Ohio's auto needs for 27 years. Meyer Baden Hop Insurance, since 1933, Northwest Ohio's been the home for the Meyer Baden Hop Insurance Agency. STN Design, your home for custom screen printing and embroidery. Affinity IT Group for managed services and cybersecurity call Affinity IT Group. Three chord, sign it, sew it, screen it, print it. Davis Farm Services, a family owned agronomy business serving Northwest Ohio farmers for well over 50 years. The Swanton Welding Company metal fabrication needs of all their customers since 1956. Pam and Dick Leatherman, Pizzanella's Pizza right uptown here in Liberty Center. Great pizza, great subs, wings. And a uh, buffet. The plethora. 
Gerald Grain Centers, family-owned cooperative uh, with nine locations in northwest Ohio, including right in downtown Liberty Center. We thank you guys. You make us uh, capable of bringing you these broadcasts at no charge, and we appreciate you guys immensely. I'm just letting you know, agronomy might be one of my new favorite words. I like that. I'm a fan of that. All right, second down and 10 now here to start the second quarter. Rufinock will be in the shotgun. He fakes the pitch. Good hit right there. Stop right away. Number 23, Kyler Kern, all over that play. Uh, you know, one of those, some of those times, that's a tough play as a linebacker as you kind of maybe get caught in between, not sure what you want to do. Kyler uh, made the decision he was going to go after the quarterback and uh, made it count for a, two, or for a yard loss. Yeah, he peeled back and uh, made a good play. So third down and 11. Ball right around the 43-yard line of Liberty Center. Rufinock now will be in the shotgun. He'll take the snap. Looks to pass. Escapes the pocket. Tries to run. Makes a guy miss in the open field. Now he's got a block up across to the 30. Makes another guy miss across the, tw uh, the to the 27. And he gets down to the 25-yard line. So a really nice play there from Archibald. Did not like what he saw, Cap, when he dropped back. Escaped wow. the pocket right away. and uh, That might have been by design, Phil. Maybe. Uh, because he had those two up backs, and both of them split out into the flat, which drew the defenders. And uh, that might have been a design play. So Jarrett Rufinock with a nice pickup on third and 11. Gives Blue Streaks a first down at the 25 of Liberty Center. Now they'll hand off right side. Hit right there, right at the line of scrimmage. Number 22, Tank Sonneberg there on the stop. And it appears the Archibald linemen are getting a little frustrated. It's getting a little chippy. Ryder Ryan, the ball carrier for the Blue Streaks on that play. No yards on the play. Second down and 10. Maybe a little, uh, a little bad blood from last night, maybe. Uh, you know, Liberty wants to make a statement, and Archibald doesn't want to let him. So. so here's that same set. They'll run that quarterback draw. He's got a couple of guys out there to lead block, and Garrison Cruz yes. comes over and eats that up, and I think they're going to get a holding penalty on the blue streaks as it looked like uh, Minnick was. Uh, yeah, you can see, yeah. <laughs> see his jersey there ripped up. It looked like David Minnick on the right end yeah. trying to escape that block. When you and, uh, pull the defender's shoulder pads out and uh, his jersey half off, they're going to probably throw a flag there, guys. Number 60, Kellen Weimer checking into the ball game now for the Tigers. Yeah, I think you said Gerritsen Cruz, also number 30. He was the one who made that stop on the last play. I see number 13 in there also as well. Can I have to get out my sheet? Hmm, I don't have him on my roster. So I'll have to get that for you. Now some guys in motion here. Still some confusion. Rufinox sets up the screen. It's Gracia. He's got room up across the 20. Makes a guy miss down to about the 17-yard line. And the tackle on the play, Garrison Cruz. 86, 86 also in, in the, the game for the Tigers. That's Colton Sapansky. So Archbold being able to move the football here a little bit. Third and two now at the Tiger 17-yard line. They'll have Rufinock in the shotgun. He's got a running back split to his right. Two guys line up in front of him as blockers. He'll fake the handoff, runs all the way. He's hit right away, Lewis Collins. And number 20, or we'll call it 62, Logan Safuentes. On the stop, gain of no yards, fourth and two. Nice play by Collins to shed the block and just hold his ground. All right, let me. I'm going to go upstairs and see if I can find out who 13 is, Phil. That's a new number for us. Okay. Well, we're going to get a timeout on the field, and it's going to be a timeout for Archibald. Um, so why we got a minute... Uh, 
Why don't we talk about a little bit about our schedule uh, coming up here on LC Tiger Sports Live over the next week or so. Um, we have a lot of games uh, coming up. We have Monday, I believe, uh, right here for volleyball, September 11th. It's going to be volleyball or soccer, excuse me, versus Miller City starting at 5 p.m. And then on the 12th, which is Tuesday, we will have girls freshman volleyball um, against Archibald starting at 445. And then boys varsity soccer against Brian right here at 5 o'clock from Kip Kern Field. And girls JV volleyball against Archibald also on Tuesday. That will roll around right about 545. And then the varsity volleyball action uh, against Archibald uh, on Tuesday as well. And that will be at 7 p.m. And then on Thursday, we're right back here for some more seventh grade football action against the Swanton Bulldogs. We also have JV volleyball and varsity volleyball against Paulding. And girls soccer against BG, or excuse me, boys varsity soccer against BG. So, um, And then to finish up the week, we will have uh, the varsity action on Friday and uh, Saturday morning JV as well. So action jam-packed week here at LC Tiger Sports Live. Number 13 is Caden Crime Brink. He's a move in, a new move in to Liberty Center. And uh, previously he was at Toledo Christian, moved into the district, and has uh, done all the uh, prelims to be able to play. And is will take on the number 13 number for us. So Gracia had a tough time handling the snap there. Not sure if he would have gotten first down yardage as Liberty Center's. Uh, defensive line uh, really had good penetration, but um, unable to handle the snap and just never really got anything going. So the fourth down and two play results in a loss of three yards, and that will give Liberty Center the football right at their own 22-yard line with 6.27 to go here in the second quarter. Smith will line up under center. He'll hand right side. Right. That's Braxton Light. Yep. Braxton scored his first touchdown in the varsity game at Napoleon late in the game there. So he's uh he's he was a happy boy. And now he's gonna see some carries here this morning. Is a center number fifty six, Lucas Navarre? I believe it is. Yeah, okay. So they'll send Bartels in motion. Quick hitter up the middle to Weirenbeck. Weirenbeck, tough, tough two-yard run uh, as there there was a lot of traffic going on in there. Uh, number 62 on the stop. And that is Jason Grime. Gain of two yards on the play. Third down and three for Liberty Center. Smith under center. He'll take the snap. Hands left side to Bartels. Good block out there by Light and, and uh, Schwager able to spring him forth for about a seven or eight yard gain, and that's going to be first down yardage for the Tigers. You know, Liberty runs that sweep very well in terms of the blocking, but really the big difference I see is the backs are able to really manage that. You know, they get out there and they they can see the blocks, whatever. Liberty's going to do the traditional. You get out there, you block, you do your job. But the bats have been able to be very selective in those sweeps. Smith now will take the snap. Oh, he's got him. Got a pass. Throws it out there. Got a man. It's Hammondtree. It's caught at the 42 or the 34-yard line. And he's driven down by Gracia, but not after a big play as uh, – uh, Mason Smith with some really nice fakes in the backfield. Found Noah Hammontree wide open behind the defense. And a big play for the Tigers. Moves it into Blue Streak territory right at about the 23-yard line. Well, trap, trap, sweep, trap, trap. Uh-oh. Tight end out over the middle. The misdirection, too, Cap. It's left. It's right. It's up the middle. It's a sweep action. There, there's You don't know what to defend. Now Smith will hand it off to Light left side. He's got a couple of blockers out there, but a good pursuit tackle by Grime. Yeah. And, man, has he had a really nice game defensively. He has. I tell you what, he, his lateral movement has been phenomenal. What's up, buddy? And he's not he's not a little guy either. Are you going to bring us back a pop? <laughs> oh, we got valet service up here now. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, Smith under center. Pitch out. Gets on the edge, and he well, looks like he'll get the first down. I think they're going to get a uh, face mask, I think. Yeah, it did look like he did grab a little bit of the face mask, face mask Excuse me, there towards yep. the end of the play, and I think that's the signal from the line judge here on this side. Uh, his helmet, when his when his helmet turns one way and his body's going the other way, it's a, not a... Those are scary plays, Cal. I mean, I, those are scary, man. Well, yeah. I've, I've had that done to me, believe it or not. So that'll move the ball half the distance here. So it'll be first down and goal from the six for the Tigers. Smith under center. He'll hand off the light, and he's getting untouched. Who is that block? Max Walker out there, number 50, uh, with the punch out block there. And uh, Braxton Light finishes it off. Touchdown for Liberty Center, 19-0 with 3.40 to go in the first half. Yeah, Braxton made a great read on that. Walker just busted the defender up, and Braxton Light just went right inside, untouched into the end zone. So Liberty Center uh, doing a really nice job mixing up the offense, able to methodically drive it down, and they'll go for the extra point here. Ethan Gray's snap is good. Moeller's hold is good. And Max Walker with the Hits boot the metal building. as it gets to the metal building. And now we got some extracurricular going on down here on the field. Yeah, uh, the referees do a nice job there to be able to get in that, <laughs> split them up. And uh, Max Walker <laughs> Max Walker is trying to hit the metal building with his extra point here. And uh, the Tigers go on top 20 to nothing, 20 to zero after a Braxton light touchdown run. Max Walker boots through the extra point. And that's our score here with 3.40 to go in the first in the first half. Well, we talked about it getting a little chippy, the Blue Streaks. Uh, you know, they're a proud they, – they've got a proud team and a proud tradition, and they've, they've – uh, you know, they are one of the perennial teams in, in northwest Ohio. But uh, Liberty Center's just uh, – last night, today, just been able to handle handle their business. And one of the things Coach Moeller talked about is, hey, you're, we're making a business trip to Fulton County. That's it. We don't prep – prep for any of this game different for you know we look at the film we do the same things it's a business trip and liberty's taking care of their business gracia looks to pass now he throws it out there and a host of tigers on the tackle uh number 18 i saw uh, that's collins. 78 lewis collins from his d line <laughs> spot in pursuit of that hold it to a two-yard gain yeah lewis collins saw that flared out held the, held the line of scrimmage just moved down to a great play. So Gracia now winds up in the shotgun once again. He's got three wide receivers lined up this side. They'll try to throw the deep ball. Gracia puts it up there. Good ball, but just oh, out of the hands. Great play. Of number 20. Who was in there on that DB spot? Was that Garber? Garber, number 14. Uh, able to throw his hand also there in the mix to kind of break that up a little bit. Yeah, Phil, I, I think the receiver for Archibald had the ball, and Garber just came in and just sweeped his hand through there and knocked it out. Great defensive play. That was number 20, Morgan Harris, but a, a, a really nice ball there from Gracia. It looked like about his third or fourth option, too. He went through his progression, which is really good uh, for a high school quarterback to be able to go to their fourth option. Because I think they wanted the deep ball on this side of the field. They, they wanted the so pump, pump fake deep ball, but he was able to come back and try to find another option. Now Gracia sends a guy in motion. He throws quick right side. Tackle missed there by uh, Old Crew. Break the, uh, he'll break it up across to the 49-yard line. And driven out of bounds there by number 81. Yeah, 81. And that num is Toby Parasini. Now 86 into the game. And that's Colton Sapansky. Old crew will check out. Yeah, I think they saw a size mismatch over there and just dumped it out to the big receiver. <clears throat> And that was number 20, Morgan Harris on the reception. Now Gracia will roll out to this side. Oh. He'll launch up the deep ball, 
and he's got a guy out there, and it's caught. And a good hit by Blake Garber right at the 20-yard line doing his job at the safety spot. And Archibald now with back-to-back -back big plays, and they're uh, knocking on the door right at the 20-yard line of Liberty Center. And he had three receivers that were he could have thrown that ball to, let's just say that. <laughs> so the Blue Streaks moving the ball a little bit here now. Find themselves right back down in the red zone. First and 10. Just north of two minutes here to go in the first half. Gracia will be in the shotgun. He'll take the snap. Rolls a little bit left side. Now looks to throw up the middle. Got a guy out there. It's caught again. And that is number 20, Morgan Harris. So Morgan Harris with three big receptions now. Has got the Blue Streaks in territory at the, at the eight-yard line, and it's going to be first down and goal for the Blue Streaks. Well, I think uh, the Blue Streaks have found something in this little this quarterback here. It's not the one that started the game for them, but he's been very patient. He's waited. He's uh, gone in, into two, three progressions and made some great plays. Now he'll take the snap. He'll roll out to the right side just out of the, uh, out of the reach of the target. And it'll fall incomplete to the turf. Second down. Yeah, and he had him out there, too. He just missed the throw. So Archibald's going to look to capitalize here uh, on their trip inside the 10-yard line as Liberty Center will get the ball to start the second half. They'll go trip receivers lined up left side. It'll be Gracia in the shotgun. He'll take the snap. It's a run all the way. Tries to follow a block, but he's hit right there by Logan Safuentes. And Mason Smith also coming in uh, to help make that hit. And it looked like a gain of no yards, maybe a loss of a yard on the play. So we'll call it third and goal from the nine, from the eight, the eight and a half. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to say, Coach, can we not run that one again? <laughs> I'm just saying. So Gracia now will line up in the shotgun. He's got a running back to his right. And I think Archibald didn't timeout. like what they saw, so they're going to take a timeout. Hey, let's talk a little bit about some things going on at Tiger Sports Live. I think uh, – all of you guys, if you watched the broadcast yesterday or on social media, we went to our new logo yesterday. So we'll be, uh, you know, excited about that. It is us. I made it very clear. You know, we get a lot of spammers that try to look like us or try to look like the OHSAA. So I was trying to be very clear about, hey, this is us. This is just our new logo. So we're excited about that. Uh, also, we're going to have an open house. Our studio is ready to go. Phil, whoop, you've been whoop, in it. Whoop. You've done some recording <laughs> in it. So it's coming together. We've got some exciting things going on there. During the Liberty Fall Fest, folks, we're going to have an open house. Please come see our studio. It's a lot of the donation money. All the donation money has gone into this. Um, and, and you know, we're appreciative of all the uh, people that donate to the Tiger Sports Live and the, found, the Tiger Sports Live Foundation and the studio, the students, the scholarships, uh, come see us, and we're going to launch our, our merchandise store. Hey, we'll be up here for the JV action against the Swanton Bulldogs, but then uh, you're going to find me. You will me. be. I won't. He, he'll be up there. Um, I'll be up there drinking some coffee with you afterwards. That's come right. in and talk to us about the foundation. Talk to us about what you're doing and where your sponsorship's going. Uh, see it all come to fruition because yeah. it's, it's special. It's special. Now Gracie in the shotgun. He'll send a guy in motion. They'll hand it that side. Maybe it looks to pass. It's a throwback pass, and it's deflected, oh. and it falls harmlessly to the turf well, as that ball went through about six or seven sets of hands there, Cap. And, well, uh, and Liberty Center, they, they would have intercepted it, but instinctively you knocked the ball down, and, and Liberty Center actually defended itself against the interception, and, you know, you – it's one of those plays you go, ah, oh, yeah, but you're taught to knock it down. So Archibald now has it fourth down and goal from the nine-yard line. You know, sometimes I think uh, in that play, Archibald faked itself out. You know, they they spun the quarterback. They faked the handoff. The, the, the handoff was going to be, you know. And it's a good little play there, a nice yeah. little RPO action from Gracia. Mm -hmm. 
and he was able to find his intended target, and that is number 11. And they just proved my point Sean, for me. Sean uh, Garcia yep. and able to score on that. So now we're going to see some – I don't know what we're going to see here. A little bit of uh, backyard shenanigans on the extra point. We'll you know, see what we get. This is a, this is a new wrinkle for the Blue Streaks. They're uh, – and then I, they just run their linemen around. I don't. I don't understand that. <laughs> I, what? What's the? Somebody explain the purpose of that to me. I, I've never understood that. What just happened? They they all okay. lined up and then they all ran back over and then they all huddled. So again. now Rufinox going to take the snap. He'll pitch it. Uh, missed tackles. And number twenty nine uh, did a nice job there for Archibald. Kind of got stuffed in the backfield. Made a couple of guys miss. And Ryder Ryan is able to squeak in for the two point conversion. And Archibald this time able to capitalize on their red zone trip cap with a pretty nice little pass play uh, to be able to get into the end zone. It's 20-8 to 8 now. Liberty Center still on top. Yeah. But Archibald able to get the touchdown. Their, their touchdown play was a great RPO. And, it, it, you know, the, the chicanery trying to spin the quarterback out, halfback pass, you know, the, the – the plays they've been successful at is when they just went back to basic football. That RPO, just a dump with a tight end over the middle, that was a great play. Nothing fancy. It's just basic football. When you start, you know, spinning the quarterback, halfback pass, you got the people lined up on the side. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know what purpose it serves. Um, so the Tigers with three timeouts and 46 seconds. They'll have it at the 35. Mason Smith drops back the pass, throws it out into the flats to. I think Isaac Orth. Yep, Orth. Orth able to get maybe maybe a yard, but he got out of bounds. So 38 seconds. Well, I th he was hoping to get Bartels open, but the safety read that. Uh, Bartels just basically went right down the field in the seam, and the safety was kind of waiting. And Smith made a great decision not to throw it because he was baiting him. So Smith now will come out under center. Single receiver lined up to the far side. Smith will fake the handoff. Throws. Got Bartels open across the 40. He's across the 50. Now he's across the blue streak 40, down to about the 40, 35-yard line. And he is driven down at the 34-yard line. And Cap, you said he wanted him on the last play. That time he was able to find him. Great athletic catch there by Bartels to go up and high point the catch and able to get some nice yards after the catch as well. First down, Tigers at the 34. Yeah, it's a great pressure by the Blue Streaks. And guess who? Number 62 for the Blue Streaks in, in on that play. Thought might have gotten a roughing the passer, but the umpire looked at that for a long time. And Mason did a really nice job of, of hanging in there for basically as long as he could have yep. uh, to be able to stick in there and make a good throw. Now Smith back to pass once again. He rolls out right side. Got a guy out there. Great catch by Bartels. One-handed down to about the 16-yard line. Tackled by Gar uh, Gracia. And again, uh, some heat there from Sean Garcia. Uh, but Mason Smith hangs in the pocket. Strong last-second throw and poise. gets it out there to Bartels. That's some poise. Smith, two plays in a row, as you said, just hung in there to the last minute and made a great, great throw. You know, Cap, that might have been the same play action going the other way. It looked like it. Bartels just, he was able to sneak past. I want to say it was the linebacker on that. Yeah. Uh, kind of just hanging out and drifting, maybe a zone coverage there, but uh, got it right over the linebacker. Bartels once again able to, to high point the catch, make a nice catch, and then try to do some nifty footwork after the catch. So, Cap, a couple plays, and uh, Liberty Center right down in Archibald territory here with 20 seconds to go and still with two timeouts. So, I mean, your playbook is extremely wide open here right now. Well, and, and you know, Liberty has has done that this year. They've, they've really broadened the scope of the things that their offense could possibly do. You know, they'll run something like that, and then they'll run a zero trap up the gut for 28 yards for a touchdown. So it, it's mind-boggling. When you watch film on Liberty Center, you go, you know, they come out last night and they threw a, you know, a little screen play out in the flat. They've done that a couple times. Uh, you know, Smith now in the shotgun. So Smith passes over to Garber. Wow. And Great the official work. right on top of it. They're going to say he's out of bounds right at about the six-yard line. Yep, just a little out. 
A little curl, as we used to call that. I'm going I'm to have to get a hot dog or something to I know, test, the, test the stomach now a little bit. I'm a little hungry. Sonnenberg checks in. He'll split out wide on the far side. Second down and one from the six. This time it'll be Roars right up the middle. Liberty Center will call see second time out here. See if I can get that number on the tackle. It's a 70 number. It looks like 73 on the stop. Yep, I think you're right. Hunter Warner for the Blue Streaks. And a timeout once again um, for our, our uh, Liberty Center. Uh, just in case you missed it, we'll throw out some NWAL scores at you from last night. Obviously, uh, uh, right here on the home of Tiger Sports, uh, it was Liberty Center over Archibald 42-14 to last night. Uh, uh, just it, it was big plays that really propelled Liberty Center to the win. Uh, Brian hosting Delta last night. You know, Brian's, you know, given up some points this year, but they've done a really nice job scoring points. They've given up 43 a game, but they're averaging 44 a game. So um, they won against Delta last night, 49-28. And Delta's a pretty good team. Delta was, what, three and – Delta with it coming off of a nice win against Lake Two last week. Yeah, that I was think. a 38-28 over win last over Lake. Um, Evergreen hosting the Patriots, uh, losing 38 nothing. Too much Houston Miranda, 15 carries, 193 yards, and three Woo. scores there for Patrick Henry. So, and then Wasion uh, up 34 to nothing at half was able to finish Swan 48-13. So those are your league scores from last night. As the Tigers now line it up, they'll drive it right side. It's Tyler Roars, and he walks into the end zone. For the Tiger touchdown, and Liberty Center with a very methodical two-minute drive offensively cap, and that looked really good. They had a couple of nice pass routes, were able to get out of bounds, and then they finish it off with a big, strong running plays there from Roars. It's all Tigers, 26-8 to eight here in the first half. Yeah, I think the significance to that drive is the play, the makeup of the plays. I think the, uh, the pass plays, the whatever – and it's uh... – Oh, my goodness. Moeller trying to find somebody to throw the ball to. A heck of a play there by Moeller to try to find anything uh, anything he could do. Um, but uh, a, a rough snap there. And, uh, you know, Moeller tried to do it. Max Walker, did you see that? Like, I'm right here. And you know what? It's funny because he is a legal – yeah, um, receiver on that kicker. area because he's a kicker. So right. that, that's a very funny. <laughs> that's hilarious. If you, if you got that, a, go, go back and watch go, that man. Yeah. Just over there by the tee, waving his hand. I'm right here. Oh, man. Oh, that's so funny. That's that. That's a Mac, Max Walker. As You know what? It I is. think that's so funny about him on special teams. He's the he's the special teams personality guy, too. He's such a fun fun kid he's to be the, around. He's got a good personality. He's a great basketball he's player. Swiss uh, Army knife. He you really know that is, red man. knife that yeah. had the spoon in the fork. What's the what's the corkscrew? Yeah, that's what I was to say. I don't – you know, when I was a kid, I didn't even know what that thing was. <laughs> what is that thing, you know? Uh, why does it – and then why does it go down? Unfortunately, whenever, once you become a parent, you, you know understand what, I mean? what that is. <laughs> <laughs> the wine cork. But, yeah, he's the Swiss Army knife. And I tell you what, he's a good weapon when you need him. He's He's fun. He's versatile. You know, and he's and beyond his years. He he does seem like yeah, a junior senior. Yeah, he seems like a junior senior, not a sophomore. So, all right, this could be the last play of the first half. It'll be Gracia. He's getting chased by Sefuentes. Throws it up, and it is tipped in the air and intercepted by uh, Bartels. He's got a convoy in front of him. He's at the thirty. Now he's across the twenty, and he's tackled out of bounds. And, out of and that's how the, the the first half is going to come to an end <laughs> as Jackson Bartels off the tip. Pass, I believe, number 27, Dakota Zabo, yep. uh, was the defender on that play, able to get his hand in there. You know what? If you're watching any of the stuff that we do here or that they do here on the field, they practice tip drills right before the game. You saw it come to fruition there, and that is how the first half comes to an end on a on a nice interception. Uh, and right now, Liberty Center leads it 26-8. to eight. We're going to take a short break. We'll come back, and we'll dissect a little bit of the first half and uh, tell you about all kinds of other fun things that are going on here. It's a 26 day here at the half.
All right, we're back here at Rex Lindgren Stadium, Kip Kern Field. First half, Phil, I, you know, Liberty Center, I, I want to say pretty much did what they wanted to do. And I think one of the most important things, and you mentioned this, is the diversity of the plays. I mean, pass plays, flare outs, you know, uh, Smith hanging in the pocket. You know, Bartell is running those uh, out routes. Uh, Gerber running that, that little curl. Then all of a sudden, boom, they're they're busting zero and one traps. They're running that sweep and uh, pretty much had their way. Yeah, you know, I think Liberty Center has seen about seven or eight ball carriers as well this morning. You know, you have Thomas Moeller who gets carries, Bartels gets carries, Wyron Beck gets carries, Roars gets carries. Uh, Light. You know, when you see – like, uh, yeah, Braxton Light gets carries. You know, when you see – uh, these running back goes in motion, you almost have to take a step with them because you have to think that there's a chance, hey, you know, they're going get to get the ball here. Um, so it's been very methodical. It's been left. It's been right. It's been zero traps. Like you said, the passing game has been very effective. Um, Mason Smith has not rushed anything. He's done a nice job of just taking what the defense gives him, which I think you mentioned really well on the swing out pass down there rather than try to gamble <laughs> and maybe throw an interception there, which kind of started that whole – two-minute drive, which gave Liberty Center yep. that touchdown there to end the quarter. Yep. Hey, before we get back to the third quarter of football here, we want to thank our sponsors. Again, these guys make these broadcasts possible. Gerald Green Center is a farm, farmer-owned cooperative with nine locations here in northwest Ohio. One in right. One in right. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Use your words. Words are hard. One right in downtown Liberty Center. Pizza and Ellis Pizza, the family restaurant uptown here. Subs, wings, buffet. Uh, been a long-time sponsor. Payment Dick Leatherman have been with us a long time. Swan Welding, providing their customers the highest quality metal fabrication since 1956. Davis Farm Services, a family-owned agronomy business serving Northwest Ohio farmers, again, well over 50 years here in Liberty Center and surrounding area. Three cord, sign it, sew it, screen it, print it. Affinity IT Group, your leader in managed services and cybersecurity. STN Design, your home for custom screen printing and embroidery. Meyer Baden Hop Insurance, since 1933, Northwest Ohio has been the home of the Meyer Baden Hop Insurance Agency. And finally, last but not least, KK Collision, the leader in automotive repair, servicing our area in Ohio needs for 27 years. I thought Kyle was like 31. His little play hammer, play school hammer out hitting cars? or Yes, sir. Changing 20, the oil in the play hammers. 27 years. He looks good for 35. Yeah, he does. <laughs> you know, Cap, I, I think one other thing that, you know, I wanted to mention a little bit about last night that I loved, uh, you know, I thought the crowd, you know, for Liberty Center was electric all night. Um, you know, just running off the field, the crowd was there. Uh, you could tell on the interceptions, and, you know, the crowd was really and, getting behind the team. And when Archibald got and, the first penalty called on him in the third quarter, Arch, that was one thing. Archibald played a pretty clean game Yes, last they did. Yeah. So, you know, I thought the crowd was a big, big, big factor. And, you know, our crowd always travels And we had well almost 2,500 live loads. So, you know, when we talk about live loads, somebody asked me last night, what's that mean? Well, that means our, soft, our, our program was loaded 2,500 times. That doesn't mean we had 2,500 viewers because – very few people watch it by themselves. So that that's the reach we have, and, man, we're blessed to do that. So third quarter underway here. And it looks like it's going to be Wyram Beck who gets the carry to start. Yeah, and let me take the halftime banner down for you. And he is tackled right at the line of scrimmage. 62 in on the stop. And that is Jason Grime. Jason Grime had a really nice first half. So the Tigers will come out now. Here's a give to Moeller. Moeller cuts off that block, springs it forth to about the 49-yard line for first down get, uh, territory. Um, Moeller is just, he's a smooth runner, but it's quick. You know, he, he, he finds the gaps, he finds the seams, he's able to change directions. Uh, exciting things coming from him. Yeah, uh, Thomas is a great athlete, and, uh, you know, I like what he does defensively as well. You know, he comes in a little bit on Friday nights and plays a little bit of the defensive back a little bit too. So Bartels. Bartels gets oh, a carry on the end. Big block. block by Deegan Schwager. 
Uh, really put wow. the pancake there right at about the 30 or the 44 yard line. And that sprung that one free for about a 12 yard pickup. And the Tigers are moving offensively right now. First down at the 36. <laughs> Keegan Schwager. I think he was inviting him to Sunday school tomorrow, Phil. That's what we call laying the lumber. Now well, Smith will be back under center. He'll take the snap. Trap play right up the middle to Wyram Beck, but stop right there on the play. The number 66 for the Blue Streaks read that well and was able to penetrate uh, and 61 also. Isaac Meyer and number 61, A.J. Boisel, uh, in for the Blue Streaks. Good stop there. No yards on the play. Sonnenberg brings the play into Smith. I like that evolution, too. You know, we don't have to run the quarterback back and forth. Saves him a few steps. <laughs> Smith now under center. He'll take the snap. It's a pitch right side to Wyron Beck. Good block out there by Max Walker up across the 30-yard line. Now Wyron Beck to the 20, and he's driven out of bounds by Burroughs. Uh, Max Burroughs along the right side, and that's going to be a uh, another first down pickup. Roy Max Walker with a great lead, just uh, clearing the way out there, as you said, pulled out of there and had a great block. 21-yard pickup on the play for Teddy Wyrimbeck. And the Tigers are in business in, uh, in inside the red zone at the 15-yard line. Smith now, two backs lined up behind him. He'll get the quick hitter up the Moeller up the middle. And Moeller is dragged down from behind at the five-yard line. Right, big number 62 again with a great game. Thought he had the tackle. He made the hit, cut right through the seam coming out of his linebacker spot. And Thomas Moeller just uh, left him standing there wondering what happened. Kobe Schrock had the tackle for the Blue Streaks. First and goal from the five now for Liberty Center. You know, and... Give credit to, to uh, Smith, too, because Moeller hits that hole so fast. I mean, Smith has literally one split second of margin for error to be able to get that handoff in that traffic. So a nice player there from both of them. Now it'll be Weirenbeck. He cuts off the edge, trips, stumbles, keeps his feeding, and he scores it from five yards out. And Liberty Center with another touchdown run. Now take the lead 32-8 to eight here with 7.19 to go, third quarter. And uh, Cap... Offensive line really making some running uh, running holes for the backs to get through right now. Yeah, it. it you know, we we talked about uh, many people talked about. Not we, I did not. We did not talked about Liberty Center not being battle tested because of their first three games and the ease. First of all, Tenor is a good football team, and so is Atsiko. Uh, and um, you know, and Napoleon's big. So you know, I don't know what they were talking about, but. You talk about our line dominance, and a lot of it, Phil, I, you know, how are we so much better than everybody else? And I, I'm going to answer the question, my own question, but execution. Man, we're, we're, we're just execute, you know, consistently, accurately. We pull, we trap, our backs block. It, it's a, you know, when you grow up in Liberty Center football, you know what your job is, and you better do it. Is I, you know, we've talked to coaches many times. We have seventy kids on the roster. If you don't step up, even in practice, somebody else will. <laughs> there's a lot of next men up. So you know, you do your job and you do it accurately, and the execution has been phenomenal for the Tigers on both sides of the ball. Because, Absolutely, you know, you talk about the defensive play calling, and Coach Bryant does a really nice job with that. Is the Rufinox pass intended? Uh, on the far side for number 28, a Ranger Krieger, and that falls incomplete. Well, and it's a business It's a business deal to the Tigers. You know, you take care of your business or somebody else will. And, uh, you know, Casey Moeller has made that distinction uh, very clear to us. It says, hey, you practice like you play, and if you don't practice well, I got five other linemen five other backs, five other receivers that will step up and do the job. And I think that's helped produce some of the depth that we have here. So uh, that competition amongst uh, each other is a good thing to have. Is, oh, there's a block in the back. And Gotta there's be. the call. Yep. 
That and was an easy one. After a gain of about six yards, but as Cap mentioned, looked like a little block in the back action against Archibald. So it'll move him back another 10 yards. Yeah, and I think, Bill, you made a good point. That, that creates, you know, iron sharpens iron. That's a phrase that you hear a lot in Liberty Centers. So, you know, you practice that way, you play that way. It's business. And uh, I, I like that, you know, because you don't, you don't go, oh, we're going to practice harder this week because we're playing Archbold or we're going to play PH so we better, you know, get an extra set. Nope, nope, iron sharpens iron. You, you go, it's a business transaction, and you take care of your business. And you mentioned, too, execution. You know, I, I think that's a big thing. You know, you could have all the talent in the world, but if you can't execute and do things according to where you want to go, where you want to do them, uh, you know, it could be a struggle. You know, we heard a lot about Napoleon's big front. We heard a lot about Napoleon's big front. We didn't care. So Rufinock now back in at the quarterback spot. He'll be in the shotgun. He's out of the, oh, the No, motion. 20. Drops back the pass. Rufinock escapes the pocket. He's got him. And a good uh, catch there. And it's uh, complete to uh, up across and now to the 45. And I think they're going to get a late hit on the quarterback by number 30, Garrison Cruz, who is kind of coming in hot on the quarterback. <laughs> but uh, – uh, he did get the ball late, and they're going to call a roughing the passer call yeah, and that was, uh, on Cruz. That was marginal, but they do err on the side of protecting the quarterback, and we like that. Uh, you don't want to get somebody hurt, but that's, uh, that's a tough play when you're barreling down on somebody full boat and he dumps it up over top of you. Um, you know, yeah. and that'll, that'll – that, that'll come with maturity and, and Coach reps. Weimer will coach him up yeah. on it and let him know, hey, you know, try to break down your steps maybe. Or, you know, Garrison Cruz, just a freshman, a lot of talent, a lot of speed, uh, big size, good size kid. So uh, Coach Weimer will coach him up. And Well, we talk a lot about reps, you know, junior high, whatever. It'll come with reps. More more time he's got on the field, he'll he'll learn to make those adjustments. So Rufinock now in the shotgun after the pass completion and the added 15 yards. He drops back to pass, loads up the long ball, but overthrows his intended target. Ty Jackson in coverage on the play for the Tigers. <coughs> Parker Trumbull checking out for the Tigers on that play. Lewis Collins has played a very solid game. He's, and, he's played well all season that we've, yeah, that we've seen. Yes, he has. So. We'll be right back here with these guys next Saturday against Swanton. Be excited for that one. Should be another beautiful Saturday morning. This time they throw up the long ball. Got a guy out there, and it falls incomplete. Colton Sapansky in coverage for the Tigers. Well, and Sapansky recovered really well. He was beat. Got his head turned around and found the found the, the – uh, Receiver and the ball, so a nice play by him. Grant Bartels checks in. <laughs> Rufinock will come out in the shotgun. <laughs> He's got Ryder Ryan in the backfield lined up to his left. He'll take the snap, rolls, Bartels under, got pressure on him, and he sacks him in the backfield right at about the 35-yard line. Jackson Bartels in on the big speed rush there from his outside linebacker position, able to wrap up Rufinock and bring him to the ground. It's fourth down. Bartels is having himself a game. Yeah, he's done some really nice things offensively. He's caught a couple of passes. He's gotten a couple <laughs> of jet sweep first downs. He's made a couple of big tackles on defensively as well. And it's fourth down for the Blue Streaks here with five minutes, 30 seconds to go in quarter number three. Not so much glare on the scoreboard there, yeah, Cap. The viewers had, can probably get a good view of it. That's a penalty. They, they had too many men in the huddle. I think they're going to let it go, though. Probably rightfully so. Rufinock takes the snap, throws it out there. They're going to do a hook and ladder, and it works to perfection. And Archibald's going to score, but there's going to be a flag on the play. From all the way on the front side, the the the, the 
the front line judge kind of ran back and threw a flag back in the area. We'll see what it's for. Could possibly be an illegal man downfield cap. I don't know if that's a play on a hook and ladder, but we'll see what they say the call is here. <clears throat> and Archibald's walking backwards, so. This is an interesting call because <clears throat> I don't know what. What I didn't see it. Calling. I, I, I didn't, didn't see anything. Unless it's a crackback block. I I didn't see it. Well, they're gonna have a long discussion about it. Well, and and, and I like this. I I like when the referees get together and say, "Let's get it right." What is it? And you know, and then nobody's perfect here, guys. It's, they sometimes they go, "Okay, hey, you know, I, this is what happened." So the referees are still uh, still huddled together down here. We'll see if we can get a call. The play was a hook and ladder cap. It was set up really nice. Uh, there was a lot of traffic over there. So we'll see if we can get the call. They're going to call an illegal forward pass. I, I don't understand that. So I'm, I'm going to assume with the hook and ladder that, he was that the ladder was not – thrown backwards I, that that's the only thing i could see for an illegal forward pass but if i'm not mistaken that is what this call behind the back is for the referee is an illegal forward pass which would result in a 10 yard penalty and a loss of down which would give liberty center the football and that is what's going to happen yep that is that was an illegal that, that's what they did but i tell you what though that was a great drawn up play other than other than throwing it forward and 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 the side judge was right there. So, you know, he had, he had a pretty good line on it. And uh, But, boy, what a what a nice play call by the Blue Streaks. I mean, that was beautiful. <clears throat> I, I, I didn't – it all kind of happened so fast. I guess I didn't really see it where the pitch took place. But, um, nevertheless, that's one of the strangest things you'll ever see. I, I, Smith under center. Now hands the Roars. Roars breaks free. He's across the 40. He's got one guy to beat across the 50. Now breaks it across the 40. Makes a guy miss at the 30. He's at the 20, and he is going to take it to the barn for a 71-yard touchdown run. And Cap, uh, uh, if you're the Blue Streaks, I don't know if it gets much, uh, much more detrimental than that. You get a touchdown play, ha have it negated. Uh, and then Liberty Center scores on a trap play from 71 yards out. It's 38 to 8 Liberty Center with 4:59 here to go in the third quarter. Yeah, you know, how do you defend that? How do you defend it? You, you, you can you can throw the pass. You got backs going multiple directions. And a 78 yard touchdown, one play off a trap. It was just such a weird thing, too. You know. You know, if you're Archibald, you get a touchdown, you get it called back. Not only do you get it, and another boot there from Walker. This one's good. It's in the backyard. It's out on 109. It's going to be in 109 and another hop here in a minute. So, <laughs> football, get me a football. <laughs> but, you know, Cap, I want to talk about that. That is something you very rarely seldom see, a fourth down, uh, loss of down penalty like that. If you if you accept the penalty, it's a turnover on downs. Really nothing you can do if you're Archbold. Right. you got to try to roll your sleeves up and dig in and make a play. And Liberty Center just comes back. And, you know, Tyler Roars had an opening there. But after that, it was all him. Made a really nice cut to the outside. Made a couple guys miss. Turned the Jets on. And then Archbold did have a really good pursuit angle there by that last defender. But uh, Tyler Roars knows what to do with it when he has the ball. Made another guy miss and was able to scamper in the end zone. Well, and Liberty Center is known for their power, power, power football. But I'll tell you what, you know, even last night, you, you got Cam Colley. He just outran everybody on the pick six and on the punt return. And then right there, Roars, he just turned the Jets on and outran people. So we're going to get some of uh, some new faces in here a little bit on defense as it looks like number 32 checks into the game for the Tigers. That's Dane Bear. Rufinock back to pass. He's in trouble. Escapes the pocket. He gets hit hard as he throws a kind of a jump pass there. And he became a runner. 
And that falls to the turf, and I'm sure that did not feel good as he left his feet to throw the ball. And that Garrison was... Cruz was coming in hard and was able to hit him there, but that a good a... clean oh, so hit. Barrett, just... Barrett, number 44, I think. Um, Baxter they're, they're Barrett a... also in there. Yeah, Baxter Barrett and uh, Garrison Cruz are uh, our partners in crime, I'm going to say that, even though that wasn't a crime. He, he, uh, he gave himself up. He became a runner and just uh, – the jump pass that uh, had uh, had to hurt. It just with the way he landed um, hmm. as he after he jumped he got hit, which kind of spun him, and then the way he landed just never looked comfortable. Uh, a good clean hit there by Garrison yeah. Cruz. Yeah. Uh, you know he was closing in. He became like you said he had became a runner at that point. Um, just a, uh, a tough call there. Hopefully, uh, hopefully yeah. Rufinock is okay. Hey, while uh, we got an injured player on the field, let's talk a little bit about our schedule. I know, Phil, we're going to be busy next week. We've got volleyball. We've got eighth grade football. We've got soccer. And, uh, you know, Tuesday, Thursdays have become a pretty uh, big day. You and I just kind of hang out every Tuesday, Thursday up here. And then we're Wednesday at the studio. And, you know. Um, when we were growing up, it was hanging out of the house. And now when we get old, it's hanging out in the booth. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you guys used to hang out at my house up there in County yeah, Road U4. County Road U4, yeah. And uh, now we just hang out the booth and the studio and whatever. But uh, big things happening for Tiger Sports Live. We appreciate that. And, again, we're developing that foundation, and that's starting to get some traction here as uh, the injured Archibald players uh, up. Yeah. You know, Cap, I want to throw a couple more scores at you from last night just uh, around the area a little bit, you know. Uh, Napoleon did play Anthony Wayne pretty tough there for three quarters. Uh, Anthony Wayne able to pull away 31-14 on that one. Uh, Antwerp just continues to take care of business, 39-6 against Hicksville. Uh, Ultimus Ayersville, Prime. Ayers, yeah, Ultimus Prime and Landon Brewer out there. Uh, you know, Ayersville, a, a really, really good road win against Paulding. Uh, we're down 17 to nothing in the fourth quarter, scored 20 unanswered to win that game, 20-17. to And then Tenora um, – Big big win for the Rams. You know, you get get your uh, get your things back on track, the wheels back on the track, if you will, and yep. able to come up with well, a nice win there. You're in GMC there play. And, you know, you got to get, get back a good to league play. win. So, yeah, I had to laugh last night. The uh, Rams Sports Live guys, uh, Keith Brown and their crew, the NW Ohio guys, do a great job. They were they were watching <laughs> us, listen, because they could only do radio last night. They couldn't do video for some reason, but uh, they were they were watching us, and uh, you know, it was kind of funny. So Gracia will take the snap. It's a low snap. But Garrison Cruz uh, uh, being a pest, I think he kind of rushed that throw just a little bit. I think he kind of had some help. Ty Jackson in there on defense. Colton Sapansky also in on defense. Liberty Center right now. Baxter Barrett, Dane Bear. Couple of Dane new faces. Bear. Dane Bear, he you you got to cut your jersey off. Your dad oh, never wore. Like Nate? Yeah, your his dad never wore a jersey past his. Uh, he wore seventy four, right? Nate Bear seventy four. He wore the the cut off. Uh, the cut, cut off. Yep. the cut off with the uh, the back pads. <laughs> yep. So Gracia will take the shotgun snap. Looks to pass over the middle. Good catch in traffic. That was a really nice catch there. Uh, good hands. Tank Sonnenberg able to drag him down right away, but Kobe Schrock with a really nice catch. I'll tell you, this quarterback that's on the field right now for the Blue Streaks has uh, thrown some nice balls to the receivers. I mean, he made it. He, he put that on a dime. So fourth down now and two for the Blue Streaks. Ball at the 43-yard line. They got to go to the 45. Looks like they're going to set up in punt formation, but – you know, we saw it last night. They did run a really nice fake that uh, was able to propel them to uh, keep that drive going. Uh, obviously, it didn't end up in any points, but gutsy call there from Coach Dominic. Maybe we'll see something similar here. Not a bad time to work on it. And there's the punt. Gets it away. Another good kick. This one taken by Roars, yeah, but they're going to say that his knee was down as he caught the football. Yep, I'll buy that one. And they're going to call him down. We'll call it right at about the 25-yard line. Roars had a collision with big number 62, and uh, 62, Roars wanted to pick him up. Let me help you here, buddy. <laughs> Come again. 
Come again. It, it roars uh Morris has some deceptive strength, Cap. Uh, you know, he's not a very big guy. He's got good speed, but, man, he runs downhill and he runs hard. Yep. Yeah, like I said, you know, Casey Muller with, with just about, I think he's 69 kids since we picked up uh, Kate and Crime Brink here. Um, he, he said, I got I got kids that can play. He got, I got kids that want to play. Smith will take the snap. He'll hand Thomas Muller right side. He cuts it back across the middle. Gets drugged down there. Number 52 on the stop, but not after a gain of 11 yards on the play. Parker Bixler on the stop for the Blue Streaks. Thomas Muller, the ball carrier there for the Tigers. You know, I had somebody say the other night to book it that Thomas Muller would be an all-state running back by the time he left here. So we'll see. Oh, As, uh, Ty I Jackson that. gets the ball now. Kind of uh, had a hard time getting the uh, the handoff clear, uh, able to break a few tackles, did a nice job to get back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe lost a half yard on the play, second down and ten. Yeah, and you've got some, some new people coming in and out, so you're going to have some of that. 27 checks in for Liberty Center. It's Dakota Zabo. Smith now under center. He'll take the snap. Quick hitter. Uh, that's Thomas Moeller. Going to get Liberty on a hold. Uh, but I think Liberty Center is going to get called for a holding call. Right, pretty evident right there in front of the umpire. So that'll <laughs> move Liberty back 10 yards. It'll bring up second down. And we'll call it 20 yards. I would be very surprised if you declined this. Well, they moved the ball already, so. They better, because Thomas Muller was about the 40. I was going to say, 45 five, yard yards. Line. Yeah, so. he was about the 45, 40, 42 yard line, so they picked up the ball and moved it back to the line of scrimmage. So the Tigers will come out on offense after the penalty. 38 seconds in rolling, obviously up 31 here. The running clock is in effect. Here's a handoff up the middle. It's uh, number 31, Ty Jackson. Had a nice little jump cut there in the backfield to kind of escape a guy and able to pick up some yards. I think he got six, we'll call it, maybe maybe five, second down to 15. And final 17 seconds here. Liberty Center won't snap the ball. So that was uh, how the third quarter will come to a close. Uh, Liberty Center able to get a couple of more touchdowns on the board, uh, and they lead it right now 39-8 to uh, as we're going to head into the fourth quarter here from Kip Kern Field, Rex Slinger and Stadium, on another beautiful Saturday morning of uh, high school football. And, you know, I think it's funny, uh, you, know, you had some Friday night college football games, and Indiana was one of them. And I don't know if uh, a lot of people around here follow Indiana football, but – um, I love the press conference that their head coach had last uh, on Thursday. You know, he had asked him about Friday night football games, and and he laughed at him, and he said, "You know what? Friday nights for high school games." Yeah. And I and I love that. You know, yeah. I, I thought that was really cool. Obviously, you know, there is so many college football games. You do, you know, have to mix them up a little bit here and there. But you know, I I'm, I, I love that response there from him. It was all you know, high school football is for Friday nights and. I don't know if it gets better than doing the stuff that we do on Friday nights. You know, I know, you know, we get to go down there and broadcast the games and, you know, bring it to all you guys and the kids and the parents can rewatch stuff themselves. And uh, grandparents, we talk about, you know, last year, Cap, we had a text from a couple of grandparents from Florida, you know, saying, hey, we appreciate you guys doing this. So, I mean, we reach so many people and we're just so blessed to be able to do this. And, you know, I, I love the – camaraderie and, and everything that well, we have going here. and the technology so really it's evolved, so you know. Um, thank God there's uh, no <laughs> film when I played uh, back in the late 70s. I'm, I'm glad of that. Um, oh, man. You know, I was a buck, buck 15 wet <laughs> running for my life. Oh, Tigers will come out here to start the fourth quarter. He'll hand it right side to Thomas Moeller. <laughs> Thomas Moeller with a nice cutback. Uh, able to get up to the 40, we'll call it 39-yard line. So a gain of about nine yards on the play. 
And here comes the freshman crew. Down. I think they'll put the punt team in. So Max Walker will be set to punt. Ethan Gray is the snapper for the Tigers. A little bit of a high snap. Walker able to go up and get it. He avoids the block. Uh, yeah, and I think that was I think board. that was one of those. Yeah, you're up 39 points. They ran into the kicker, but more. what a roll there for Max Walker <laughs> and uh, uh, Max Walker with about a 70 yard boot there to completely flip the field position as uh, uh, Archibald will get the ball inside their own 10 yard line. And yeah, Walker, they they did knock the punter down, which had been running into the punter, and it wouldn't have been a first down anyway. But I think Liberty Center will take what they got here. At the six-yard line. So he wow. punted that ball from uh, right around the 31-yard line all the way down to the six. So uh, right about 64-yard punt there from Max Walker. And the weapon, the Swiss Army leg, if you will. I <laughs> uh, got some new faces in on defense here. Ethan Gray in for the Tigers. Uh, number 35 also in. Oh, so I believe that's Jackson Lonzak. 13, if that's uh, Caden Crimebrink. And number 18, Max Perry. <clears throat> and a nice little pass over the middle. Touch pass caught there by Garcia. And he's tackled by a host of Liberty Center tacklers. Uh, Cruz, uh, we'll say. Uh, 18. Well, yep, 18 was also in on the stop. I'll have to check that number. A big Noah Jensen, boy, he just. Uh, that's actually. Um, the other Jensen boy. We have a Noah Jensen. Mark Jensen is who that oh, is. Oh, okay. <clears throat> At safety. Six, or is that 53? That is Trumbull down there getting some snaps. Parker Trumbull. Another pass. This one uh, caught by Krieger. He tries to make Ooh. a couple of guys miss. <laughs> and is that Lewis Collins coming back there? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody just whacked him a good one on the cutback. I'm trying to get the number here. I'm going to bet it was yeah, Lewis Collins. I bet it is. <laughs> Lewis Collins having a heck of a game. He comes off now. They're like, okay, you just busted somebody up. You get to come out. <laughs> Lewis Collins with a great game. Yeah, he's really good at his pursuit from the D line. He does not <laughs> give up on any play. He's an animal, and he likes to, he likes to hit. When I, I keep thinking about that play last night, Hunter Spangler got in the middle of the screen, peeled back from his defensive lineman spot, tracked the screen down, forced the fumble. So Gracia now in the shotgun. He'll send a guy in motion. He'll fake it right side or left side. He'll throw right side. And good tackle over there. I think that's Adam Foster, number 48 on the stop. Yep, I believe you're right. Number 20 on the reception there for the Blue Streaks, Morgan Harris, who's had a really nice game <laughs> offensively. 60 checks in for Liberty. Kellen Weimer. Yep, wow, well, freshmen. can tell they're freshmen because the freshmen don't get their names on their jersey here at Liberty Center. Been a long-time tradition. Gracia now will be in the shotgun. He'll send the guy in motion left side. It'll be a run play all the way. And he got hit hard as Kellen Weimer uh, wrapped him up around the ankles there. And then uh, Kreinbrink kind of came in and cleaned that play up. But uh, the result of a play is a first down as he was able to get enough yardage to break the sticks. And uh, Archibald needs to be careful here running the quarterback. He got hit pretty hard. They're down one quarterback. He's uh, – Taped all up on the side. Looks like he's got an ankle injury. Amanda, our trainer, yeah, and that was the, the one that went down after the <laughs> jump pass. So yeah. hopefully, uh, hopefully he's okay. No, he's getting his ankle and his leg taped up right now over there on the far side. So Gracia now sets in the shotgun again. He rolls left side, throw back to the right side to to Garcia, and he's hit right away. Number 34 on the stop. That is Brady Badenhop for the Tigers, and a good stop there for a gain of one yard. 
It looked like Garcia, if he was able to break that tackle, might have had a little bit of green in front of him. But He's a big uh, boy. Uh, Brady Badenhop with a nice tackle in the open field for the Tigers. Actually, a gain of only a gain of one until and again the yards after catch the the, the negating that uh the liberty center uh tackling has been phenomenal when you negate all yards after a catch uh it, everything's in front of you the clock continues to run 442 here with a running clock and um that, that's just fundamental football there Gracia now will take the snap looks to pass loads it up Throws right side to Krieger, but a lot of traffic there. Uh, five Tigers in the area. <laughs> Baxter Barrett was there. Adam Foster also one, there. And Garrison Cruz also One in the blue area. shirt and five white shirts. <laughs> so now third down. Max Perry checking in now. Barrett will check off. Coach Muller is going to coach him up a little bit there and – Maybe uh, talking about an angle or something like that. But that's what I love. You know, 39 to 8, four minutes to go. Uh, your head coach is out there, you know, still working on things. And uh, that's what makes a program and, and, and this so special. So and you see that you got the varsity guys down here watching it as well. So and you love to see the, the teamwork. Now Gracia will drop back the pass. Looks, looks, looks. Nobody there. Oh, he's now got he him. loads up and fires. Got a man out there wide open. Caught it at the 35-yard line. Got one guy to beat. And he makes uh, makes the play. And Archibald able to score a long touchdown. And that is number 20, Morgan Harris. Uh, his second touchdown cut, catch of the game. And Liberty and just with their eyes in the backfield, they got caught. And he just ran a seam and then just kept going. So a big touchdown play there for the Blue Streaks. We'll give them uh, 14 now, and they will look to uh, get the two-point conversion. Well, and again, you know, we've got a lot of uh, kids in there that don't get a lot of playing time. You know, we do have a freshman game coming up, Phil. Oh, yeah, on Monday. Yeah, and uh, it's one of the few freshman games that we have. There are not a lot of teams with that many kids in their program. Liberty is certainly one of those, and the freshman team will actually be able to play a game. So a lot of kids out there right now that don't get a lot of reps, but that will all come. Gracia looks to run it all the way, and now it's going to be an option play. And Archibald will get the two-point conversion. I, I like so Gracia at quarterback. He's got some moves. He's got some patience. He's got he, some flair, doesn't yeah, he? Well, he and, and I'll tell you, he's like, like in that last touchdown play, he waited, he waited, he looked, he went across. He, first he looked right, saw the guy going down the seam and was just patient and threw it out there, threw a nice ball too. So. And you were talking about him earlier a little bit, about him going through his progressions and uh, something as a young quarterback that can be difficult to do. And he's been very poised back there. Now, granted, he has been, you know, he's been choppy feet too. So he's ready to move, he's ready to go, and uh, he's had a pretty nice game. Yeah, he's got that Energizer bunny at there you, it, go. you know, <laughs> thing going on. And now uh, – Caden Kreinbrink uh, at quarterback. He actually came from Toledo Christian, and he came in as a quarterback. And, uh, you know, Casey said, okay, we'll see what's going on. And, yeah, Archibald had to call timeout. They had too many guys on the field. We're not enough. <laughs> no, they had too many. Too many. Yeah. So, so. Kreinbrink uh, going to get his shot here at quarterback and get him some reps and – And uh, Caden, welcome to Liberty Center. Yeah. He, and, uh, you know, a mo recent move in. So, hey, while we got a quick break, again, you know, our sponsors make these broadcasts possible. And we got KK Collision, Meyer Bay Knopp Insurance, STN Design, Affinity IT Group, Three Chord, Davis Farm Services, Swanton Welding, Pam and Dick Leatherman, Pizza Nose Pizza. And last but not least, the Gerald Green Centers. And, again, guys, you know, I know we say this a lot. We're very appreciative for our sponsors and all the other people that support us. Uh, we're really hoping to build this uh, Tiger Sports Life Foundation and uh, be able to help a lot of other kids and, and help us do some things to uh, only enhance our offering. And we've got some programs coming up. We've got, we're going to introduce uh, in the next week or so something called The Breakdown. Run a breakdown, and we're gonna break down. Uh, we're gonna break down soccer. You know the different positions. What do they do? 
What are they responsible for? We're going to break down bowling. We're going to break down volleyball. Oh, Baker's game. I'm all in on that breakdown. Yep. I love that. Yep. So some new th new things coming. And I uh, thought a flag just went flying. Teddy Wyrimbeck, the ball carrier. Oh. And again, Crime Brink getting some snaps under center here. Tigers will go up to the line of scrimmage. <coughs> Crying Brink at the quarterback spot. Wyron Beck and Light behind him in the backfield. Old Crew, the wing back to the left side. Here's the give to Light. Good cut there by Braxton Light off the block. I, Max Walker throwing a nice block out there. Uh, let's see if I can get that other number. 62, I believe. Logan Safuentes yep, also Sefuentes. on a nice block on the left side. And a first down run for Braxton Light. So first down run there for Braxton Light. 2.30 and counting here to go fourth quarter. Tigers have it at the Archibald 47-yard line. First down and 10. Kreinbrink under center. He's got two backs behind him. Old crew lined up wing on the right. Kreinbrink hands it backside to Weirenbeck. Weirenbeck's got a big hole, tries to squirt it through the uh, two Archibald defenders, but he's tackled right there by Garcia. Uh, but not after a gain of 11 yards and another first down for the Tiger offense. Well, and some great downfield blocking by 11 and 52 uh, for the Tigers. So, uh, you know, I, lo I love it when our linemen and our backs are 10, 15 yards downfield blocking. It's a staple. It's it one is. of the staples here at it Liberty is. Center football. And that, that was one thing I wanted to mention on the Roars run down here. Archibald had one guy, and there were four other white shirts following yeah. – uh, uh, it roars to the end zone, so. Yeah, and uh, legal procedure here, Liberty Center. Did he accidentally fall? Yeah, <laughs> and then, he, then, he, then well, he threw his hands up and he's like, oh, that's an easy call. It looked like he lost his balance. <laughs> Side judge here, Mr. Andrew Quigley, the landlord. Great, a great center in basketball, high school. He's called him the landlord. You, you come in his little house. And you paid the rent. You, you paid rent, buddy. In the paint? <laughs> yeah, you paid rent in the paint. <laughs> That's right. The landlord, don't you come in my house. You go pay. <clears throat> Ooh, nice play. 23 by Archibald. Man, yeah, that it, play never really got going there as he was able to kind of knife right in there and uh, take that away. And That's Lars Salas. Clock still running here. Yes, this probably will come to an end. A couple plays here. Oh, Liberty Center not in a hurry. They're now looking to rub it in. Of course, you know, if they get a – if uh, Braxton Light. I think well, they're going to take a knee here. Yep. It looks like they're going to line up in victory formation. Yeah, they don't need to snap it. I'm going to say you, know, you give these backs a chance, and uh, they see daylight. They're going. They don't care what the score is. And he's waiting for – Yep, last minute, and that'll be probably the last play of the game here. Yeah, I don't think they're going to have to snap it again. I think they'll just go ahead and – even if there was a play clock, I don't think they would run the play clock here. I think you just kind of um, let that be the last play of the game. But, <clears throat> you know, Liberty Center got a dominating fashion here the, uh, the, this morning, uh, you know, able to take care of business, offensive line, really the story kind of uh, leading the way, uh, getting the running backs holes. And then obviously, as you know, the plethora of talented backs we have. Captain does a nice job of finishing those runs off. Uh, Mason Smith, very effective in the passing game, completed the passes when he need to, and uh, just an all-around good game for the uh, Tigers' offense and defense. Yeah, I think you you mentioned it. You made a great point uh, early on about the, the misdirection, the versatility of the play call, the pass. You got one back going one way. You got two going the other way, and, and you have to cover everybody. You, you you can't just go, well, all right, the Liberty Center is going to run. They're going to run, you know, zero one one traps and boop. And then, you know, and then you cover the outside. You cover that sweep. You, you cover the wide receivers, and then they zero trap you for a touchdown, you know, 80 yards. So a, another good performance by the Liberty Center Tigers. And, I, and I'll say solid, a solid performance. And, and one of the other things is, you know, the only fly in the ointment for me has been penalties. 
And I think that's something the team's addressing. I think very few penalties here. We had some, you know, and you're going to get some. You're not going to be error-free. But, uh, you know, so a good solid game, great execution, and uh, a nice win. Yeah, and a lot of these kids are getting some really good reps too. Especially, we love to see the freshmen get out here. And as you mentioned, uh, they're going to get their own their own game and their own chance to showcase their stuff next week. So, uh, love seeing that. Love seeing the reps. It really increases the depth. So, yep. Um, uh, here at uh, Tiger Stadium, another big win for the Tigers. A thirty-nine to fourteen victory over the Blue Streak. So, Cap, you want to get us out of here? Yep. Well, for Phil Snow on the call, I'm Mark the Captain Bly, and. Once again, a great victory for the Liberty Center Tigers over the Archbold Blue Streaks. And everyone, as always, it's good night.